What is up, everyone? Good morning, good morning on this beautiful Thursday and rainy Thursday and cold Thursday in Redding, California. It's not our usual. Um, what's up, Ibrahim? Man, so good to see you joining all the way from Kurdistan. What's up, guys? Thank you, everyone, for joining. I see uh, Levi already joined. This is awesome. Hey, everyone. My name is Andrew Steele. I'm uh, uh, with the, with Lighted Candle um, from our headquarters here in Redding, California. Um, we're so excited uh, to be continuing these series. I hope that if you've been able to join these these last uh, Thursdays over the last couple months, um, hopefully they've been encouraging. You've been hearing testimonies from all over the world, from from our team that's on the ground in northern Iraq right now, to to leaders from all over, uh, from Pakistan to Bahrain last week in South Africa, and, and the heart of these prayer for the nations uh, Instagram lives is is for for us to to be activated, to pray, to give, to be the hands and feet of Jesus. Whether that's uh, supporting and donating towards all of our kids in India, the child sponsorship program which you guys have been amazing we've had so many of our kids that were left unsponsored during this time of quarantine and global pandemic where these kids had literally nothing and no ability to get food you guys have stepped up <clears throat> what's up adam and you guys have stepped up and and truly been the hands and feet of jesus and we have so many kids have if hopefully you've been able to follow and track on our page and see these kids getting food and getting their donations um, and discipleship uh, amidst these crazy times. So thank you guys. Um, Today we're continuing with our series and we're joining with my buddy Levi Hug. I'm going to have him join right now and uh, he's a good pal of mine. I'm so excited for you guys to hear from him and hear he was, uh, I actually I'll leave, I'll leave the intro for when I let him join. But uh, thanks everyone for joining. Comments where you guys are, uh, are joining in from. I see a bunch of you. Um, let's see, uh, Levi, I'm adding you right now. Awesome. Where are you guys from? I know Ibrahim, we got a team in Iraq joining. What's up, bro? Hey, what's up, man? How's it going? I'm good. I'm good. Good. You guys, everyone that's joining live with Light a Candle, uh, you guys get the treat and the privilege of he, uh, hearing from my buddy, Levi Hug. Um, he's a, a pastor here at Bethel Church, Reading, and I've had the privilege of, of traveling with you, of seeing God move in powerful ways, mostly here. We haven't been overseas yet together, yeah. but we, we're dreaming about it. Someday, yeah, soon. Someday. But um, man, Levi, you're just a huge, huge uh, gift to to this environment, to so many people that are under your mentorship, but also to so many people in the nations. And you just carry such a heart um, for seeing God, uh, for seeing hope magnified, mm -hmm. whether that's here and your huge heart for the states and seeing, you know, the, the U.S. as a nation to be reached, but also traveling so much through the year, uh, specifically to Southeast Asia and to India. And mm -hmm. so today I just wanted to, we wanted to hear from you, hear from what um I w i've been talking to levi but i know so many people would be encouraged to hear uh man you were there you were there on the last flight coming out of india <laughs> yes. when covid was breaking out and they shut down the entire nation and levi um was on a flight so yeah man why don't you just uh introduce us we're gonna we're gonna pray if you guys are just joining we're gonna hear mm. some testimonies and then we're gonna pray and, and we're gonna believe that holy spirit is gonna speak to people on this uh on this stream and, and people are gonna be activated to go and to join Amen. the nation. So, yeah, bro. Tell us about that experience in, in India and in Malaysia just a couple weeks, what, a couple months ago now. Yeah, so, um, wow, it's, it's, it's fun to do this with you, Andrew, and um, thanks for jumping on, everybody. Yeah, so, I, so this spring, I, I felt like the Lord put on my heart to do an extended trip to Asia, and um, I was invited to speak at a conference in Malaysia, uh, right at the beginning of March. So I had that kind of in the schedule, <clears throat> but I, when I scheduled it, I felt like I was supposed to stay there for a while. And I had no idea that <clears throat> we would be going into this pandemic season. <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, the Lord knew he's, he's not surprised. So yeah, we, we had a, a powerful time in Malaysia. Um, just right at the beginning of March, we were with Heidi Baker and Leif Hetland, and some of the leaders that we're working right. with, um, that <clears throat> some of the leaders maybe you haven't heard of, that are that are part of our our leaders network here at Bethel, 
<clears throat> excuse me, got something stuck in my throat. Um, okay. But <laughs> so, um, yeah, just we had such a powerful time. It was right. And they were kind of they actually almost shut the conference down because they were starting at that point in Asia to start uh, to kind of like shut things down because of COVID. Uh, but it was before it was de declared a pandemic. And and so, um, you know, we had like our temperature checked at the at the airports and stuff. And um, so it was starting to get a little serious. But God just broke out in such a powerful way at this this conference. And I, and then right after that, I had a, a trip to India. And so we spent spent like a couple weeks in India and we left. I left India on March 24th. And it was the last day that there were any flights coming um, uh, were within India that were happening. They just, I mean, it was literally in a matter of a couple of days, they just shut the whole country down. So it was an interesting experience <laughs> just yeah. being there. Um, but yeah, we made it out. And I was with my good friend, uh, Gene Varghese, who's, uh, he's a minister with Iris Ministries. Yeah. And so him, him and I came back together. But um, yeah, so exciting to what what God's doing there. And yeah. That's awesome, bro. Yeah, man, we have trips coming up. And I know you do too, as well. And we're trying to, all of us are navigating, you know, plan travel, plan short term trips, we have people probably mm -hmm. joining that have have signed up or planning to go with us to India, um, or, or by any means getting to India, or, or we have a couple of trips in Southeast Asia, Indonesia as well, uh, later this year. But um, have, what, what has been maybe share a testimony from that trip, you shared a couple with me that have been wild. But I mean, uh, something, whatever is coming to mind for you, just to encourage people, you know, God's still moving amidst all of this, you know, or even a testimony right before you left. Yeah. So um, I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking of one that would just really encourage you guys. I think, um, you know, we, we, we've been hearing some testimonies. I'll just kind of touch on a few testimonies that we've been hearing yeah. from some of our leaders in Asia specifically um, and, and India and Southeast Asia, the Philippines as well. Um, um, just about God's provision, you know, we've been hearing like just some pretty amazing stories about God providing during this time. You know, it's really hard time for a lot of people. Like a lot of these people in these nations are are day to day. You know, they're on a day to day wage, so it's like if they don't make money that day, they don't eat. You know, so it's a, a real problem. Like just shutting everything down is it's quite a um, fiasco. But um, uh, yeah, some of our leaders in in the Philippines they they felt like just led by the lord to start a food bank in their out of their house and they're like well we don't have much but we're just going to do something for the community and just to be a resource they just believe we're going to be a resource to the community and so they told everybody hey we got we got a food bank here and food just started showing up out of nowhere they had like tr literally like truckloads of food they had a they had a bread truck show up one day and they literally like dropped off like a thousand loaves of bread like they don't even know where they came from and um and and they've just had like more than enough like they just took that step of faith like hey we're gonna be a resource to our community and we're gonna be uh, a place where people come that are in need and they just made that decision really with not like not very much and they just started that and then god just showed up and he provided so i i feel like there's a lesson in that for us during these times of just hey like just stepping out in faith and believing hey that we are the light of the world we're called to be um uh, you know like the the blessing of abraham is on us that we're um, that literally god wants to bless us in a supernatural way so we could be a resource to the nation so we've we've heard similar testimonies like that um just about god's provision um, during this time, we've also heard some pretty sad um, reports just of people, you know, that have died, you know, and like even from COVID. Um, and so that's, a, that's, it's, you know, a, it's kind of hard to hear some of the stuff that's happening too, but there's so much hope in the midst of it. And I, one thing I think I would um, just share from that trip that's a little more general. And I, I shared with th this with you earlier, uh, Andrew, but um just what God spoke to me on that trip. I, that's what I've been just really feeding on. Yeah. And I had this, uh, I had this experience. I'll just kind of try to keep it brief, but on the way to Malaysia, it was like right at the beginning of March, I was getting an Uber in San Francisco um, to the airport and my Uber driver popped up on my phone and it said, Jesus is arriving soon. <laughs> and so <laughs> I had a, a Uber driver named Jesus. I thought, well, that's kind of cool, you know? And uh, I've never had a Uber driver named Jesus, but he, he <laughs> showed up. And uh, so 
and I thought, well, maybe that's just a coincidence, you know, like that's just kind of cool. But I screenshotted it. I think I said something about it on Instagram <laughs> or something. And then yeah. um, we went to this conference, had this powerful time of just really just hearing about like the, the, the father, there was like real emphasis on the father heart of God at this conference and, and, and got to spend some time with Leif Hetland, who's just a total legend. He's like going into these places like in the Middle East where like literally uh, creating like he's just got the craziest stories of going in these places of the Middle East and working with terrorist organizations, like literally like going into like meet with terrorists and sharing the gospel with them. And they like love, love him and how God's given favor with these people that are just it's totally mind blowing. Yeah. But um, we had this just amazing time with Leif and, and Heidi and, and right at the end of it my phone uh something popped up again on my phone and this time it was my it was my airbnb app because i have an airbnb here in reading and it said jesus is coming soon to your airbnb and <laughs> and i was like okay well this is kind of this is kind of weird and so i just i just i just knew in that moment i'm thinking god i think you're saying something here and uh, kind of a cool just personal testimony that came out of that this guy named jesus stayed in my Airbnb. He ended up staying for um, about a month or more. I don't know. But like, it was right during the worst time of the pandemic. Like literally everybody was like empty on their Airbnb. Nobody was filling their Airbnbs anywhere because nobody was traveling. And I had Jesus next door. He was staying in my Airbnb <laughs> and uh, for like a month and he was paying cash at the end. And I just felt like God was just like, you know what? I've got you covered. And so that's kind of one of my sources of income there. And so um, I just, I, I was just kind of a cool thing that happened, but also <clears throat> I really felt like God was saying something through that, that, um, that, and, and I shared this with, with Andrew, but just that I believe this is such a special time, uh, uh, such a special season that we're in. Um, you know, it says in the Bible that the sons of Issachar knew that the signs and the, the times and the seasons, they knew exactly what to do. And I feel like it's just a, such a, it's such an obvious thing that's happening right now in some ways or there's something God is doing something very sovereign in the earth. And I really feel like he was speaking to me through that, that we're actually, you know, in a day of visitation, you know, obviously we need to be ready for Christ's literal return. I think we should always be ready for that. But I really believe that Jesus is actually drawing near to the earth in a, in a, in a sovereign way. The Bible talks about a day of visitation. There's been times throughout history where there's been days a season, a day of visitation. And I believe that, that we're, we're, we're actually in a day of visitation now. Like it's actually the night um, of the day. And, you know, and the day begins at night in the, to the Hebrew mind. Their, their, uh, their day begins at, at night. So I think we're actually in the night uh, part of the day. And the dawn's going to break soon. And it's going to be a whole new world. I believe that we're going to start seeing just, um, just incredible harvest like you know we're already seeing a lot of that and i know that you got a lot of crazy stories yourself andrew about what god's doing in asia and those kind of places in the world but uh it's for everywhere it's for america he says i'm going to pour out the the knowledge of my glory is going to cover the earth like the waters cover the sea yeah. and so um we're just really excited i'm just like i'm, I'm i've got so much anticipation i've never been I, it's kind of weird because we're in a pandemic, right? <laughs> like, yeah. But I don't think I've ever been, had so much anticipation about a season of life and just a season of uh, that we're in. It's just, I'm so pumped. I'm just so pumped. That's awesome, bro. So, oh, I love that. I love the intentionality of God and the intentionality of even for you as you had these things planned and you're like, I mean, even the craziness of your trip. I remember following you. I'm like, wait, what a minute, like, what's going on here? Like, we, we like, call back our teams. We're, like, well, that's right. going on India, and Levi's going into India. What's happening here? And we're hearing from our team, our amazing Light of Candle team on the ground. Um, so I, I just love that. I love, I love the testimony of, yeah, just refining our focus and putting our eyes and being present. You know, we're, we're getting so many people so much. Uh, if you're just joining, you know, on this stream, thank you, guys. Uh, this is the amazing Levi hug, and I, I saw a bunch of other people were, we're joining in as you're sharing that testimony, um, Levi. But I think a huge encouragement for people, you know, in the middle of this, and like the sons of mm -hmm. his cards are saying, how do we practically, um, a question for you, how, how do people, if we can't go, we're getting ready to go. Our, our, um, 
our stance as Light a Candle, and I'm sure it is for you too, is we're not on hold right now. We're, we're active. We're on the front lines. We're asking God. You know, Jesus mm. is coming. He's trying to tell us in all of our mobile apps right now. Yeah. Uh, how, do <laughs> right. We, how do we practically get ready to go? How do we, as, as a church, a, as a people, come together? And how do we refine our focus? And so what do you think that looks like for India, for Malaysia? You know, other than like signing up for a trip, what do you, how would you encourage people to be practically engaged right now? Well, I, I think there's a couple of ways to do that, Andrew. And it's just such a great question because, you know, we, um, we can all be a part of what God's doing, you know. And um, I love what, you know, um, you know um, just, you know, Bill Johnson talks about like, you know, I'm going to either be, be sending someone or I'm going to be going, you know. And so there's a yeah. sending and there's a going. And we can all... Some of us can't maybe go right now, like, or especially right now, right? There's not really many options <laughs> unless you want to swim to India or something. I don't know. <laughs> but um, like, so, but we can all be a part of the sending. We can all be a part of, you know, our, what we do with our money is so important. And yeah. you're like, and the Bible says, you know, where your, where your money is, your heart will be like, your heart will follow. So I try to just, uh, just even if it's a little bit, try to sow like a seed in places where you know, not just where you know that there's good people on the ground that are doing a good thing, but where God is doing something like sovereignly. I try to sow where I try to get behind what God is doing, where I know God is doing something. You know, there's some leaders in our network that literally are seeing thousands of conversions in Asia. Um, there, uh, we have one leader who's who's got like, I mean, dozens of, of networks that he's working with in Southeast Asia. He's a missionary from Switzerland, actually. He lives in Thailand. And they, they've seen like 12 resurrections from the dead, like in, through their network, just in the last few years. And they're literally seeing thousands of people come to know Jesus. And this is just in the last few years. And, um, but one of the things that's happening is miracles, signs, and wonders. You know, they figure that 80% or more, probably, that's just a conservative estimate, because almost every testimony you hear of these people that are Buddhists, that are shamans, like people that are, uh, Mus you know, Muslims that are encountering Jesus, they're having supernatural encounters with Jesus. They're, he's coming to them in dreams, uh, or they're experiencing a miracle of some kind. They're experiencing a healing or a sign and a wonder. And so they always have these stories that are, uh, that are connected to these, these uh, conversions. Yeah. And so um, I would say, just to answer your question, find people like that. And, and there's a lot of people like that that maybe you haven't heard about that, that aren't on TV every night, but that are, that are quietly behind the scenes that are just doing the work of the gospel. I would say just get behind people like that, even financially. Hey, like, I'm going to sow into this. I want to be behind this. Uh, yeah. because I, I see that God's doing something on that. And I think that can really position our heart just in a place of just uh, alignment with what God is doing. Uh, yeah. So that's one way is just financially um, finding ways to do that. I think another way uh, that I'm really fired up right now about Andrew is actually right at the beginning of March before this pandemic was declared and everything, I felt like really God was stirring my heart to actually start looking at technology and uh, social media more. Like just asking the question, am I really using the tools that are right in front of me right. to, 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 make, to use the gifts that God's given me to, to share the gospel, to you know, sow seed, to sow the word of God out there. Yes. And, um, and even I thought it was, it was something kind of interesting with the way he kind of like, I felt like he spoke to me through that experience with, you know, Airbnb and, and Uber, you know, those are kind of like two tech companies that have really changed the whole way uh, business is being done. You know, yeah. they're kind of like pioneering companies and they're these online platforms. And actually after that first kind of experience, I was just praying and I was like, Lord, like I, I feel like there's more potential there. And I feel like, you know, even with what's happening in education, you know, and I, I have a business, I kind of in transition right now, but I was in a business, it was an education business. We were buying and selling textbooks for college students. And so I'm kind of familiar a little bit with the way education's going, like in general. And it's, go there's a huge push for digital. Like it's, it, the way people are going to learn is going to drastically change. I really believe in the next, you know, 10 years, we're going to really see a lot of change. And I think 
even with the pandemic that's happening right now, I think it's actually speeding up a lot of uh, um, adapting and a lot of innovation that maybe should have happened 10 years ago yeah. um, with um, like medicine and then so much innovation that there's so much room for innovation in some of these, these, these industries. And, you know, it's kind of like that old school model that's being disrupted. Yeah. And, but I think um, that's kind of a general side of the times that we're in. But I think the church is going to latch on to that too, in the sense of like, hey, this is like a platform. You know, we're seeing people healed. We're seeing people filled with the Holy Spirit, like baptizing the Holy Spirit for the first time through video calls like this. Yeah. And even if you're watching right now, there's no limitation of time or space. And just, just simply as your faith is activated, like on this call, like God can sovereignly touch you through this computer screen and yeah. change your life forever. Come on. And, you know, and, and so um, we, we're believing that. And um, so I, I, that's another way is I think just using social media, um, you know, um, the technology that we have to, to, yeah. to share the gospel. Come on. Come on. So we got, we got give, get financially behind people that are on the ground. If we can't be there ourselves, get, get behind there where we sow our money shows where our heart's at so big. And then, and then using social media to truly uh, be, be an acts church. Like the mm -hmm. early church 2000 years ago, later, looks like us using Instagram to actually not just have awesome meetings and, and whatever and, and platforms, but to actually sow the seed and to actually promote and, and, and bring forth the gospel. I love that. Um, so true. Bro, could we, could you, I mean, uh, man, I know a lot, I was looking at a bunch of people here uh, that have been joining who are friends of Levi, but then also people that have never met you before. And so one, my heart hurts for anyone that hasn't been around Levi Hug, just, just to brag on you a little bit, but <laughs> I man, love you're you, just, man. You're, you're such a gift to people um, and, and to the nations. And I'm really excited for uh, to be in the nations with you later this year, but yes, do you pray if, if there's, I mean, there's so many things that you could impart or even with just those testimonies you were sharing. I know that that Holy spirit is, is, uh, mm. is encouraging and stirring people up that, that have joined and we'll see this later, but could you pray? Um, absolutely, man. Just impartation. Of, absolutely. Of hope and hope. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to pray and I'll just add this one more thing. Cause you know, I said, you asked like, how can we, do get involved i would say to literally going somewhere and i believe that we'll be able to do that uh hopefully soon but may if you've never been like on a mission trip or something like that jump on some of these mission trips that these these groups like light light a candle are doing you know and andrew and, and trying to actually just just go like literally going somewhere i think is really important and yeah. just and, and and getting around people that are are seeing this kind of stuff like yeah. like um it, it's contagious it's like a virus it literally is like a virus the, the, the what god does it's more contagious than any covid 19 if you start hanging around people that are moving in the spirit that are moving uh with these things it's like something that you can catch more it's more than caught than taught sometimes yeah and so you just catch it you catch this thing in the spirit of just like uh faith for miracles and nations um, you know, and, and, and these kind of things, some of our leaders, like they're meeting with even nation, like leaders of nations, totally soft, like just by God's, what God setting things up. It's not because they are like, have, you know, these great skills or political, you know, s savvy skills. It's like totally like God setups and God's like encountering like, like Buddhist families that are like running like countries like Vietnam and places where, you know, they they need Jesus. And, um, so you start hanging around people like that, or they're doing that. It just, you catch something. And yep. so I, I'd, I'd love to pray. Um, and just, we're going to believe just even through this call, uh, Andrew, that people, whoever's watching this in, and whoever even sees this later on today or where, whenever you watch this, that God, God's, God's got your number. God yes. has got your number. He has got your <laughs> number. And he, and he says, he's tagging you. He says, you're it. You're it. You know, I, we talk about a lot about God's the hope of the world and, and like, you know, he is, but I would, I want to say something that's more true than God's the hope of the world. God in you is the hope of the world. You are the hope of the world. Like we got to get that. Like it's not, we can't just outsource our, 
our faith and just say, okay, oh, we got to pray and God, no. You got to, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Come I on. release just a revelation of Christ yes. in you that you no longer live, but Christ lives in you. God, you know, Christ is not the hope of the world. Christ in you is hope in the world. I, yeah, you, you know what I mean. Christ is the hope of the world. Don't, don't call me a heretic. I'm just saying, <laughs> like, you know what I mean, right? We got to yeah. get that. It's Christ in me, the hope of glory. We've got to carry it. We've got to be the hands and the feet. And, and I just release grace for yeah. supernatural, sovereign power of God, that you have a revelation that God is inside of you, that God is inside of you, that you are not just a mortal human being anymore. When you give your life to Jesus, the Paul rebuked people for acting like mere men. And I just want to tell you, that Jesus Christ, the creator of the universe, is living inside of you. It says that we're partakers of the divine nature. We got to get over ourselves and these things of this false humility that's crept in the church. And it's actually pride, it's arrogance, and it's self focused. It's focused on how much faith we have and how much faith we don't have. We got to get off of that and focus on how much faith he has and how much faithfulness he has. Because he is the faithful one. And I just release grace right now over anybody that's watching to step into this revelation of Christ in you, the hope of glory, in Jesus' name. And anybody that's watching this that hasn't been baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire, I release the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire right now over your life. And I just speak grace to hear his voice, to walk with him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, I'm encouraged. Me too. Let's go right now, baby. <laughs> Let's do it. Hey, Levi, you've got the hope of glory in you. Come on. Let's you go, know, I'll baby. just say this about that, <laughs> Andrew. The hope of glory. The Christian life is a constant recalibration of focus on Jesus. It's all this. This is what it is. We're constantly recalibrating back to the hope of glory. We all get kind of pulled out of that sometimes, you know, through circumstances, through disappointments, and through the lies of the enemy he throws at us. But we can always just take a moment, just recalibrate, recalibrate, yeah. come back to that plumb line of it's all about, it's all about him. Yeah. Uh, so good. It's so true. Well, Bro, thank you so much for taking this time to be to be on this call. And and for any of you, like like Levi was saying, uh, Levi is a part of, of the Bethel Leaders Network here in, 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 at Bethel Church and ready, but also uh, connected through, I mean, many trips. That will be if, if you check out uh, LeviHugMinistries.com, uh, right? And uh, your yeah. itinerary and trips coming up this year. We're looking at partnering and making sure we're together, crossing paths in India later this year. So if any of you are interested, as Levi was even and praying that, I know that God uh, is speaking. And, and whether you're giving, uh, praying about it, but also just going. Uh, we, have, mm -hmm. we have trips live right now on lightacandle.global slash missions where you can sign up right now. Uh, the trips are a little flexible timing because as soon as they release these quarantine restrictions, we're going. We're going to be on <laughs> planes going. So we have trips coming up to uh, to all over Southeast Asia, uh, but specifically India uh, this August and this fall. So uh, get online, sign up, and also practically giving, like you were saying, Levi. If you want to sponsor a child, we still have uh, uh, children all across India that have been rescued out of temple prostitution or, or uh, out, of the, out of labor camps or just in, in tough situations that are not getting basic needs and they still need to be sponsored. So if you go to lightcandle.global, you can sign up to uh, sponsor a kid uh, wow. monthly and, and then get the chance to then go with and join us in the nations and see these kids being discipled and, and re raised as the next generation in India to impact the wow. world. So, um, wow. woo, yeah, we got someone so uh, joining from India. Love from India. What's oh, up, awesome. Guys? So, well, bro, thank you so much. You guys, uh, what a treat to hear from uh, the legend himself, Levi. We love you all. Love you, Andrew. Bro, Thanks we'll so be much. in touch. Yeah, I love you, bro. Thanks for doing this. It was fun. Dude, of course. Yeah. Blessings, bro. We'll see you. Keep, see you guys. Enjoy. Keep the stoke. Right. Later, guys. <laughs> yeah, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.